But when he went to Lot, he didn't go. He just sent the angels. You know, Lot was righteous, but Lot was not living righteous. He was saved, but he was not living good. So God did save him for Abraham's sake, but he sent the angels. Well, that's great, yeah. But I think I'll choose Jesus himself coming and fellowshipping with me. You know what I mean? I'm preaching, you know, yeah. that's what we need to, that's why the Father sent his son so that we could run into his, um, the Holy of Holies and say, Abba, we don't need to go through any mediator or let me just ask for this anointing. We can, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's so limiting. And God's taken all the limits off at the cross. Do you get this? Mm -hmm. And it's that same thing of this whole cutting-edge ministry that's going rampant all through the church. Oh, did you get the latest book? Uh, So-and-so had a revelation. Well, it's true. These are all great, and they're for our edification, but they're not the gospel to be preached. That takes away from the glory of Jesus. He is the one that saves, and it's his revelation, his story, his anointing, his cross. This spirit that's been le loosed on the earth, it doesn't care what you're doing. It's all good, as long as it takes away the attention from Jesus, because mm. Jesus saves, yeah. and um, that's the power. No man comes to the Father but through me, Jesus said. And yet it's easy to come through him. But yet you got to acknowledge him. You have to give him all the glory. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's as simple as just wanting everything for your life and knowing where to go to get it. He said, you, you only come through me. I'm the gate. I'm the door. I'm the light. I'm the way. You know, he said it. That's absolutely right. I'm like, I'm jealous for his name, and I know you are too. Mm. And it's like, all these things are good, but it's not for us. And it's not right. for salvation. Right. The cross. We don't want to make a name for ourselves. We want to point to the one who did it. Right. That's Jesus. Right. Some preachers, old-fashioned preachers, way long ago would pray that, that, that they would be hidden behind the cross, that people would see mm. Jesus when they spoke. Not nowadays. Mm. People want to be seen. They, they'll write a book. Then they're invited to all the cutting-edge ministry churches for the latest word. And everybody's like, wow, yeah, I want his anointing. Well, that's like something else like God showed me too. Like, do you want like a second-hand blessing? Because you can get it and it's good. Or do you want to go right to God and get blessed? Mm -hmm. Amen. You know? Because you can. You're his son. You're his right. daughter. Right. That's right. what he wanted for us. The, right. the Israelites said, oh, no, 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 Moses, you go, you talk to God, and then you bring it back and you tell us. We don't want to, we don't want to deal with God. So they got what they wanted. But Moses uh, walked and talked with God as a friend, and that's available to all of us. And this is so going with the... Um with the outpouring of the Spirit, because it's not on one person or <laughs> or a few names that can carry that type of a, an outpouring. Yeah. Because it's on each one of us. It's being lifted That's up. That's right. Into and it takes place. really, it's a wonderful thing. It takes the pressure off you to perform. We're not to have that pressure. He never meant for us to have it. It's not by works. It's by grace. It's a finished work. It's all done. We're just happy children receiving from the Father. Yes. All that he purchased for us through his Son on the cross. The finished work that Jesus did. And um, it's a free gift. And if you try to earn it, you're insulting him. Because you don't do that when someone gives you a gift. You say, yeah. You're grateful. Mm -hmm. It takes away from that relationship that he wanted. That we're just, wow, you're awesome. Thank you. I don't deserve this. What, you mean you became sin and you gave me your righteousness? And now I don't have to feel guilty and I can go right, right into the throne room and talk to my dad, my father God. And um, it's all about grace. It is, it is. And, and actually this outpouring of the Spirit almost requires that we all have that intimate relationship with the Lord. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Because he comes in us. And so uh, it right. is so limiting to just say, oh, these 
certain ones have this huge anointing. That's right. Well, that's not the outpouring of the Spirit on all flesh. And it's not the Gospel, and it's not the Word of God. And in the last days, there's going to be many revelations, there'll be many miracles, there'll be angel visitations, there'll be visions, dreams. It says in the Bible, like you're talking about, His Spirit will be poured out on all flesh. But we're to stay rock solid on the Word, because the enemy can come as an angel of light. He can do miracles. We saw that in Egypt, you know, with Pharaoh and Moses. But the, the, the Word of God is our anchor. And always, always, as New Testament, New Covenant people of God, we have to filter everything through the New Covenant. It's always pointing to Jesus. Mm -hmm. If it's pointing to us, it's works. If it's pointing to Jesus, it's grace. Yeah. There's little keys that can help us. If, you, if it's in relationship, like Father, and, and uh, then you know it, it's a good thing and it helps you to understand it. We don't want to worship each other. We, we right. don't. But flesh wants to take credit always. And even everybody wants a leader. They desperately want to follow someone. And so if if we don't speak up, we're you know what what he's revealing to us about Jesus. Mm -hmm. All these other voices, you know, are being heard. So it's time for people to speak up about their relationship with Jesus. And in fact. If, if it weren't for Jesus, I wouldn't have made it in a healthy state of mind uh, with all the things I went through as a single mom, mm -hmm. trying to raise three little boys on my own without any financial assistance, no, um, what do you call it, uh, child uh, assistance money from my ex, and uh, no money from my family, and no really great skills to lean on just getting just telemarketing jobs and and also having someone constantly against me and trying to to you know work against me so I depended on Jesus for years without a bank account without health insurance and I've seen people with much more sort of lose it or depend on drugs depend on just sleeping around to get help but the Word of God and Jesus Christ Himself kept me... I, I remember holding the kids and dancing and singing one day of it at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you, and having joy. So Jesus was very real, and you cry out to Him, and He's there, and He's real, and He's the only Savior. And He should get the glory, He should get the credit. We should ask for the Jesus anointing, you know? Yeah, that's very good word. I took a test one time online, what Bible character are you most like, and it came out David, and I was really proud of that, because David was a man after God's own heart. And But still in all, that's still second hand. I don't want to be like David, only in the sense that he was all about reaching for God and giving God the glory and spending time with Him. But, see, he made us so unique that when we reach to God for the Jesus anointing, for Jesus, there's a new expression in the world now. We have to get things in their right order, and I think it should start with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, above every principality and power. He put us there with Him. He gave us His righteousness from that finished work on the cross. He said it's finished. Mm -hmm. He paid a totally high price for us. That's how precious we are. If we meditated on these things, we would feel loved and know how special we are mm -hmm. and not try to be somebody else in the Bible. Go right to Jesus. Ask Him to, uh, for all that, how can I acquire and enjoy all that you bought for me on the cross? You know? Mm -hmm. And I think the way, one of the keys in doing that is realizing that He gave us His righteousness. So stop feeling nervous like, I can't ask for that. I, I'm not that good to, well, he, anything Jesus deserves, we deserve, according to the Word. You can't just pick and choose, you got to go by the Word. And if we are His righteousness, that's why He did it, so that we could receive whatever we need, and even way more. You know, He's a lavish God, He's a Father that loves us, and um, gosh, there's so much in it. Even Abraham, he had this wonderful blessing from God, right? Mm -hmm. Lot was blessed because of his association with Abraham. And that's good, and it worked, and it was good, but it, that's not what we want. 
Mm -hmm. Why would we go back, you know, to something less? Look at the Word, everything you read in the Word, from the standpoint of being in the New Covenant. Mm -hmm. Now all the requirements are met for our blessing because Jesus fulfilled all the requirements of the Law. Mm -hmm. The Law was there to bring us to the end of ourselves to realize we couldn't do the Law. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees actually brought it to a place where they actually thought they could do it. And then when Jesus gave a Sermon on the Mount, He said, You heard it said, You shall not um, uh, murder. Well, I say to you, if you are even angry with your brother with that, a cause you've murdered him. What He was doing was bringing the Law up in the highest standard to, to show people you cannot keep the law. The law is valuable in that it brings you, everybody thinks they can actually do it. And then you, if you really try, you will see, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted and I can't do it mm -hmm. consistently and forever. And then that brings you to the end of yourself and you realize you need a savior. Mm -hmm. And he's there. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a man drowning. I heard it said that a lifeguard can't really save that person mm. when they're flailing and trying to do it themselves and mm. they're struggling and they're sinking. But he'll wait nearby until they realize they're and they're exhausted and they, they're spent. Then he comes in and takes them to safety. Mm -hmm. And that's what the law does. We're flailing, we're trying to do it in our own strength. Mm -hmm. We get exhausted finally, we realize we need to be saved. Jesus is right there, he's been waiting for us and he brings us to the safety of the finished work of the cross. It's all done. Um, he paid the price that we could never pay, paid our debt, took our shame, our guilt, our sin, our sorrows and griefs he bore. So when you're sorrowful and grieved, grieved it's actually a choice. You can say, wait a minute, he bore my griefs and sorrow. I'm not going to bear this. Exactly. You can actually make a choice. Right. Um, some people feel like, well, I have to feel guilty. I did a terrible thing. Well, that just repeats the cycle of sin, guilt, shame, sin, guilt. Shame. Really, at, the best thing to do at that point is to say thank you that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because all our sins have been paid for, past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. He'll never have to be crucified again for future sins. As we behold Him, it right. says in the Bible, we become like Him. Whatever you're focusing on becomes bigger, like you were talking about magnifying Him, oh magnify the Lord with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you focus on what He did and you start really getting happy, mm -hmm. talk about meditation. Think about it, and, and Jesus says, come reason together with me. Though your sins were as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. But, but reason with them, think about it. I, I asked him about this thing yesterday. I said, what is it that bothers me, stirs me up about folks that want the, uh, you know, this anointing or that anointing? And I realized that it's not that it's bad, it's just that it's, we're, we've been given everything. We've been given God himself, you know. He, he bared his soul for us. He gave us everything. It's really not nice to sort of, you know, reach for something lesser that he gave to somebody long ago and uh, you know take any kind of pride in that it's it's like let's receive what Jesus gave us and let's be grateful well we will it's an automatic we don't even have to try we don't even have to try and muster up faith we just have to dwell on grace and think about you know, picture him on the cross dying for us while we were shaking our fist at him. We weren't repentant. We didn't have great faith. And he, he loved us. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he did it all for us in that state. When we picture that, we become very grateful. And then we just receive that healing that he already paid for because he were all those horrible diseases on his body. It says, he said, my body, this is my body broken for you. That's what he meant when he said that. Even when we take communion, we recognize the blood was shed for our sins. I don't know if everyone says or recognizes that his body was broken for us. And that means uh, let's focus on remembering that that arthritis was on Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. That heart mm -hmm. trouble was on Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. Let's eat this bread in remembrance of what he did. 
and boom, you're receiving the healing. You know, you're reasoning with him. Mm -hmm. You're interacting with him in, according to what he says.